Here's a breakfast and plus TV Africa. Many thanks for being part of the show this morning. It's about that time where we go through the pages of a national dailies. The front pages, to be very precise, we have a constant who joins us, Chris Kende Wandu. It's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you, my sister. Good morning. How was your Easter break? Well, there was no break, really. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It's all right. Uh, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, the, the banner caption would be uh, the first pot of call now. It talks about Igbo presidency. Southeast leaders want consensus across party lines. And in the words of the scripture, how can these things be? Southeast leaders want consensus across party lines. Bold caption written on the leadership this morning. Underneath, there are several riders. Ohaneze to meet Southeast presidential aspirant as Ngige declares today. Okay? And he said he was going to uh, make his intention known to Nigeria shortly after the Easter. And uh, fingers across. PDP scrambles to reduce number of aspirants. Why? China denies backing a Meiji for president. Really? And you also find office of president has been reduced to nothing. Uh, IPAC is also quoted. These are the writers underneath the caption. Don't tamper with $418 million Paris club funds, state tells the federal government. That's also another bold caption that you find. And World Bank suggests steps for Nigeria orders to avoid debt uh, distress. It feels like we have gone too far uh, in terms of our indebtedness. But away from uh, the debt caption, we also look at presidency tackles Bishop. Matthew Koka asks him to join politics. Debt toll in South Africa flood hits 443 and others missing. Really sad. Oni lords Amechi's leadership credentials. And Lagos shorts Chrisland schools over juvenile sex scandal. These are the headlines on the leadership newspaper. But away from the leadership, we take a quick look at the Nigerian Tribune. And on the Nigerian Tribune, a bit different from what's been reported on the leadership, you find Afer Babalola to federal government. Suspend 2023 elections, set, six, set up to six-month interim government. You need to read beyond the headlines. Suspend 2023 elections, set up six-month interim government. Now, his reason for saying this is because we cannot continue to recycle the same category or the same persons we always do over time. Propose new constitution that will provide for part-time legislators, one's next president to be healthy, educated, not more than 60 years old. Says Nigeria faces bankruptcy due to activities of corrupt leaders. Now, these are the headlines, uh, the board caption. And the ride is underneath uh, uh, the Nigerian Tribune. But away from that, Dubai sex tape, Lagos shuts down Chrisland schools. Sharing child pornography attracts uh, 14 years in jail. In jail, it warns, please begin investigation. 2023, governors relegated as politicians jostle for tickets. And away from that, you have the APC, PDP, Abgar, others notify INEC on presidential convention. PDP to hold primaries May 29. APC May 30th. 31st for the SDP or 30th and 31st for the APC. Uh, you also have the SDP saying seven orders keep me on date. So SDP and seven other political parties uh, haven't really talked about when they're about to hold their presidential. Lagos bans military checkpoints in Apapa at laws nine illegal checkpoints. And World Bank alerts on danger of rising debts and inflation. 418 million dollar Paris Fund Club, you have state wants federal government. I take that again. $418 million Pari Club refund states won federal government. And Lagos GAC approves second term for uh, Governor Songwolu. These are the headlines on the Nigerian Tribune. 
And quickly from the Nigerian Tribune, we'll just run through uh, the Nation newspaper this morning. On the front page of the Nation newspaper, Senators reps to court sustain electoral act. Uh, we're looking at uh, 84, subsection 12 of the Electoral Act as amended 2022. Outrage over pupils' gang sex in Dubai. Please launch probe and schools short. Knocks for Matthew Coker, NEF. Song Wolu gets green light for second term ticket. And uh, food prices soar in March. Why economic recovery is slow uh, by World Bank. There's also another one. You, you find don't deduct $418 million from the Paris Club debt from our location. States cautions the federal government. How Buhari should battle banditry killings by Cardinal. Uh, find out the Cardinal. It's more like an editorial on the Nation newspaper this morning. Now, these are the headlines on the Nation newspaper. Away from the Nation, quickly, we'll just take a glance at the Punch newspaper. And just before we have Chris Kane, the one who joins the conversation. Electoral violence, 1,149 Nigerians killed. INEC suffers, 42 attacks, decries rising insecurity. Electoral violence, 1,149 Nigerians killed. INEC suffers 42 attacks and decries rising insecurity. Underneath commission loses over 9,000 card readers. Plans risk assessment. There will be no result for violence merit polls. Uh, INEC rec threatens. Oyetala's aid once against violence ahead of the governorship elections. These are riders underneath the boat caption. AGF letters delays Darie and Jolly. 157 others release. Uh, talking about uh, the pardon that was granted them by the president. Presidential pardon, if you like to see. Cross Weaver, Taraba, Zamfara yet to pay minimum wage and four others... After how many years? I mean, four years after, you still have some of the states not complying. We're talking about the 30,000 naira minimum wage. And is that, how does that even measure up with the current reality of inflation? Car dealers threaten to close stores this week, over 15% charges. Lassa fever kills 138 and CDC activates emergency center. Vandalism orders push oil firms and banks boring to 5.68 trillion naira. Uh, it's also another caption you find. And just before we move away, you find another header saying, remove your what? Cast talks, joint politics. Presidency replies Matthew Coker. Akira Dolu returns to Nigeria amid death rumor. Afer Babalola six poll suspension interim government after Buhari and Apcon to sanction Sterling Bank over uh, the provocative Easter advert. Five months after Lagos fails to demolish an defective Ikoi skyscraper, this is what you find. Uh, Chrisland short school, parent disagree over alleged rape and please begins uh, that particular probe. These are the headlines this morning on the pages of a national dailies. We've been able to go through the punch, the nation, the Nigerian Tribune and the leadership. Chris Kane and Wandu is on standby. It's good to have you join us this morning, Chris. Thank you once again for having me. All right, so um, which of the headlines, I mean, interests you? Let's leave it open as we went through the pages of the National Dailies. Yes, I think we should start with the reaction of the federal government to the um, Easter message uh, released by um, uh, Father Bishop um, Kuka Matu Kuka. Uh, expectedly, um, <laughs> I, I knew that the federal government, uh, in their usual manner, react to the that um, um, message rather than looking at the message they are looking at the messenger which is quite unfortunate that is where there's practically nothing that uh, uh, bishop kuka said that is not true and uh, there's nothing that he has said 
that uh, have not been repeated over and over again. Don't forget uh, the uh, Northern Elders Forum has uh, also issued uh, a, a statement along that line. The Islamic um, uh, Society, uh, GNI, I think, also issued. Then, even a um, few weeks ago, if not about a week or two ago, the chief imam of Apu legislative quarters also issued, um, also made mention of um, some of these things, which led to his being uh, sacked by the board of trustees of that mosque. So, uh, uh, Bishop Kuka was only speaking the minds of Nigerians, and um, the federal government, as usual, behaving with the very set in the uh, in the sun, leaving all his body exposed. Uh, rather than uh, look at those issues, um, uh, started uh, by attacking the bishop uh, to the extent that Gary uh, uh, who the spokesperson of the president, was saying that if uh, um, uh, the, the bishop is interested, they should come and join politics. That is childish. Who body that is not feeling? Probably Gary who is the only person in Nigeria that is not feeling the heat. And the problem and the, all the level of insecurity, economic hardship, um, uh, unemployment, name it, that Nigeria is facing. And is, 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 is it not a fact that we are more divided now than we were in 2015? So what is it that he has said? Even Father um, of Bishop Kuka is just following the part of other um, uh, revered clergymen uh, before him. If you remember, Messi Vivi, there used to be somebody, uh, there used to be a bishop called Ulubumi Okogye. He used to be uh, the Archbishop of Lagos. That was his, he, 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 he was also uh, one of those that uh, uh, have always been echoing uh, societal ills and saying that government should be responsible. And also, that time, there was also a, a, a clergyman called. Uh, I think uh, Reverend Adet Loye, I, I, I don't know his designation now, I don't know whether he's still alive. He used to be of, in, in charge of the Anglican uh, Church in Nigeria, and he was also very, very so you, it is always normal. If you go through the Bible, there are always men of God that we always want kings, as we, there we had kings, now we have president. This is the situation that uh, people are suffering. Do something to uh, improve the life uh, of your citizens or people. And most of them close when they close their ears to that something always happens so uh it's quite unfortunate to as i said once again that someone in the person of garba show will come and uh, and be attacking a more responsive government we rather look at it as it were and try to find a way of making sure that some of these issues are this but what we have in country whenever anybody raises an issue an objective issues the government will come out with attack dogs and then um, continue to attack it. But all well and good, there will be only one year for the government to uh, exit. Um, it is now left for them, whether they like it or not, um, for history to join them. Which part of the history that will, that will be, I don't know. Whether positive or negative, it is left to them. But the fact remains that whatever um, all that uh, Bishop Hooker said is a true realization of what, what is on ground. And they can only but continue to pretend that it's not the truth. So, but what, what do you make of the response of the federal government asking that he joins politics? Maybe it might just be a brilliant one. And that's what I said. I said they say he should join politics, and I, I said that was that is being childish, uh, because uh, if you want to join politics, is it uh, Garba Shew that is going to turn to join politics? Um, Garba Shew is just an appointee. Garba Shew, to my knowledge, has not um, contest any election in Nigeria. And um, he has not won any election. He was just appointed um, by the president. He used to be an aide of um, Atiku Abubakar, to the best of my knowledge, uh, prior to the 2015 election. After the election, and the president picked, he was, a, I think he was a nominated by, the, by Atiku Abubakar to serve in the cabinet of um, President Muhammad Buhari. So he has never contested any election. So I should be even be thinking he's the one that should be contesting. Um, the uh, Bishop Kuka has his work cut out for him. He's a clergyman. He's doing well in what he's doing. Gerba Shehu, um, uh, uh, to me, is a yes man. And if he's talking about politics, I would rather think he should be a constituency in 2020 and, uh, and contest and try to see whether he will be elected, either into any of the elected positions.
attacking um, anybody that says anything concerning the situation of things in the country is not the right way to go. And I think the president should call him for that. It's not every time you react to issues. It's not every time. That silence at times is good. You can, it's not everything you react to. The one that the, uh, the chief man of uh, Apple um, said, I didn't hear Governor Shibu issued any statement about that. The one that uh, the Islamic group, uh, JNI, um, also mentioned, I didn't hear Gabba show the best. Why is it that whenever uh, uh, Bishop Kuka speaks, he jumps on the fray and uh, as I write, write not all sorts of this. They should know that they are public servants. They are there to serve us. We, our taxes are being used to pay them. That is what, they, what is going on. They, our taxes are being used to pay them. So any one of them that seems that is serving the president, I just want just jump on any, just for the front of it, just know that, as I said earlier on, this, they will see themselves on the side of history where they want to find themselves. It's just barely one year. Those that were there before that did the dirty job, where are they today? Let's wait and see what happens. Mm. All right, Chris, uh, let's also take a look at this one, uh, Igbo presidency. The Southeast leaders are asking that consensus should be a thing across party lines. And the question is, how can this be, especially when you have the Electoral Act uh, giving them, you know, the option of choosing direct primaries, indirect, and consensus, so? Consensus is in the Electoral Act. So if they want to go on consensus, oh, well and good. But does consensus bring out the best in our polity? Does it give us the best candidates? I don't think so. I think they should go into the field and sort it out. And at the end of it, at the end of it, so the best candidates should be able to have it. Best, most often than not, at times consensus is an option where you want to trim down the number of people. When you have over 20 or 30 candidates jostling for the position, for a position, it makes it more difficult for you to be able to streamline yourself and getting somebody a, a particular candidate. Um, so if they within themselves, they agree that um, there's the need for them to have a consensus. Oh, well, and good. I know that um, the Southern, um, the, the Southeast um, candidates, about three of them recently met and agreed that um, they're going to work together. I know that of which will be um, Pio Sanyum and one other, um, I think it'll happen one, one other guy um, for the PDP. Uh, but they didn't come out to say that they are going to have a consensus um, candidate. But Ohanese and other Igbo groups just said that it will be much easier for uh, them uh, as a group if they come together and pick one of them. Um, now that it seems that uh, the PDP uh, is a bit silent on whether they are going to throw the uh, presidential ticket open or not, uh, why the other um, the zone are also gearing up uh, to present candidates. In for them to come together and choose one of them. But to me, I think the best option is for all of them to be able to do that and try it. Don't forget that also within the PDP, currently, uh, Tambua, Saraki, and um, Bala, um, the governor of Bauchi, already agreed that with themselves they're going to pick up a, con a consensus candidate. But the, uh, what's in the primaries is coming up in the next few weeks. And um, um, so many people, including myself, I always say that it is the turn of the Southeast um, to be given the ticket uh, because the Southeast is seems to be the only geopolitical zone that have not been able to um, uh, have not been able to get the presidency since 1999, not even since 1999, since 1966 or thereabout. But it cannot just be dropped on your lap. Um, presidency cannot be dropped on your lap. You have to work so hard for it as, as a region, as an individual, to be able to gather enough support from all other parts of the country. And once that is done and they believe in you, then the opportunity will give. So the South is um, geopolitical zones just don't think that, shouldn't think that the presidency will just be dropped on their lap. Why they say, let's go into consensus. You have to consult, you have to meet with other leaders from other parts of the country. And they believe that you have what it takes. Uh, you have the right candidate to be able to do the job. I'm sure they will support the person as far as um, uh, the issue of um, 2023 is concerned. So um, let's talk about Chris Ngige. He, he says he will definitely declare his intention, and that's on Tuesday, to join the presidential race. Uh, what, what do you think about this? And he has also mentioned that if Nigerians give him the chance to work, he would definitely do great for the country. The more the merrier. Uh, Chris Ngige has a right. He's a mental qualified Nigerian. He has been a former governor. He has been a minister for close to seven years in Nigeria. And, Excuse um, me. Yeah, I, I think he's eminently qualified, but the fact is that can he be able to can he get the ticket of the APC? Uh, I don't know how that 
possible that is it will be an office task. When you look at the arrays of um, candidates that are just need for that job, you have Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu uh, from Southwest. You have the vice president, um, um, Yemi Oshibajo. You have Rutimi Amich, who has also declared. And uh, who else, who else, who else? And um, within the APC. So, uh, but it is his right, and he feels that he can be able to muster enough um, consensus, um, um, uh, what is it now? Delegates. The delegate is about 7,080 7, or thereabout that is going to vote. Uh, what we don't know is uh, um, where it will be zoned to, but practically it has to be to the south. Because unlike the PDP that is leaving its own open, it seems to have made up its mind to zone the presidential ticket to the south. It is not within the south to know where to zone it, whether to the uh, southwest, south-south, or, or southeast. You have um, Amici coming from south-south already. You have Wengige, who is declaring today, coming from the southeast. You have um, uh, the governor of um, Ebony State, uh, Dave Omahi from Southeast. You also have a um, um, vice president as well as Ashwaju. And we also heard that one or two governors from the Southwest are also going to throw their hearts into the ring. Um, but um, it's the delegates that will determine that, if it's the delegates. And uh, whoever they choose, then they have to make sure that they bring out somebody that is formidable also, that can be able to challenge the candidate of the PDP and other political parties that will be coming up for the election. But my problem for the with the APC is that I wonder what they're going to campaign. Whoever emerges the, the candidate of APC, is he going to campaign on the legacies of the, uh, the current government, just as the vice president said, that is going to uh, uh, improve on the legacies of President Muhammad Bahari. And I, I continue to ask, what are those legacies? Is the legacies of unemployment? Is it legacy when it comes to insecurity? Is it legacy? Uh, on the economy, where the Naira is close to almost 590 to a dollar now, or which of the legacies, I don't know. But um, well, in his they, case, they have their work I mean, in his case, he said he will re engineer Nigeria the way he did with Anambra State when he was governor. So uh, maybe that might just be something that's sellable. Well, he will re engineer um, Nigeria the way he re engineered Anambra State. He didn't finish his term. So I wouldn't know. Yes, he did one or two things. But he has been in this government for almost seven years. We have seen the issue of uh, labor. Currently, ASU has been on strike for months. Last year, ASU was on strike for one full year, almost one full year. And we saw how he handled it as the Minister of Labor. So if that is what he's bringing to Debu, I will, for me, as far as I'm concerned, it is dead on arrival because he, would, he doesn't have the capacity for me. If he cannot handle just a flimsy um, issue of ASU, as the Minister of Labor, then how can you be able to, how can we hand over a whole nation like Nigeria to you and believe that you can be able to deliver? If you cannot deliver on little things, then there's no possibility of you delivering on the bigger one. Mm. All right. So, you shouldn't be talking about uh, what is an umbra. Let me tell, tell us what he has done in the past seven years as a minister. Now, this is also underneath the bold caption for the leadership. It talks about the People's Democratic Party scrambled to reduce the number of aspirant, presidential aspirant. And you are saying that it's free for all, especially as you have a lot of persons contesting. Don't you think that this might just be uh, another way of depriving the people of their constitutional right? Chris Kane, wonder, do we still have you on the line? Well, for now... It's Go ahead. Okay, so it seems like we have been... Um, set up the PDP, um, led by the uh, governor uh, of, of Benin. That is where uh, it was agreed, um, we committed them up with a discussion on how um, the two of them... Um, um, will be done. And that committee has submitted its report to the National Executive Council of PDP. Although this snippets from that um, committee report so that um, that uh, it has been the presidential uh, uh, this thing has been uh, thrown open. But that the neck of PDP has not come out to tell Nigerians whether it has been open, uh, open open or not. So until that committee comes up, it seems as it were presently like it is an open race and every candidate from up Nigeria um, is free for now uh, to, to contest. But until uh, the National Executive Council come out to tell us specifically whether it has been thrown open, whether it has been shown in any particular um, region, um, the candidates will continue to campaign as it were. Hmm. 
So um, um, also on the Nigerian Tribune this morning, Afe Babalola said to the first, I mean, that's gotten a lot of reactions. People, uh, those who have actually not read beyond the headlines seem to be having a different opinion. But this is what he's suggesting. Suspend so the 2023 elections, set up six month interim government. And that's because we cannot continue to recycle the, this old uh, in his word, I mean the same people, not the word old in his say, but the same persons who have been in power. But what do you think about this ideology? Should we consider recycling for the fact that we don't want to um, bring back the crop of persons that we've had uh, almost from 1999? That is out of the window for me. Out of the window. Uh, we to uh, the revival that is out of the window. Why are you setting up a interim government in a democratic uh, system? We saw what the interim government under the uh, military regime of uh, Aban Gida, the one he set, he set up. Then. And um, what happened to it? How about that came in? And, um, uh, and, um, and remove that idea. An interim government is not known to our constitution. I don't know where in the constitution. Um, a son, a, a reverse son. So that I used to, I used to say that we should go and amend the 1999 constitution as, uh, uh, as amended. It's not possible. What we should be conversing is getting the best out of all the candidates and making sure that we elect the right people, pick the right people, and making sure that the people's vote count. The problem with Nigeria is, apart from getting the right candidate, is because of the fact that most people don't believe that their vote counts. And you look at the number of registered voters and those that vote at any election, you will come to ask yourself why just a few number of people elected because they don't believe in the system. Um, in the electoral process, because they also don't believe that their vote counts. So want to be able to make people to believe that when they vote, their vote will count. Then that is where the issue is. So but for me, an interim government is a no-no. Uh, it will not work, it has never worked, and will never work under the circumstances. As it were presently, in the same set of people after the uh, interim government is talking about, in the same set of people that will come and contest. So how do we stop them from contesting? It's not possible. How are you going to do that? So for me, um, I don't think uh, it, it, it's not the way to go at all. But he also raised, I mean, some of the issues he's proposed and concerns for him about, uh, for instance, you have the constitution according to him it's a military constitution and it hasn't really captured the current reality of um, you know the country and also he talked about having provision for part-time legislators where you don't have to have it you know on a full-scale basis these are some of the uh, concerns and issues um, that he has raised and the reason why we should you know take that time and propose having it some new constitution what can we achieve within six months? I think what you should be conversing, yes. I, when you talk about taking with the constitution, yes, I, I totally agree with you. I think we need for us to be able to think out with the constitution. That is, we need for us to have a holistic look at our constitution present as it were. Yes, this constitution we are working, but I'm able to us by the military uh, in 1998-1999. And everybody believed that this is not a holistic uh, constitution that does not have the input of Nigeria. But we had, uh, we've had the, the national conferences where so many job suggestions were made. But the, the current government and some of the government have refused to look at that uh, report. I would think, and as our police can back, it's supposed to go back to that constitutional conference, just of the book, and look at the issues at the and some of the pertinent uh, issues that Jamil issues that we have raised. And, um, and that would help. Um, the way the current constitution is. Uh, the structure is not doing us a lot of good. And it has only been that uh, we agree that it is not working. We can do it, uh, take it. Either we go away with this constitution and get a new one, or we do the necessary amendment. Uh, but you know that the National Assembly did uh, a, a recent amendment, and, and some of the clauses, I think about 47 or so, clauses of the constitution. That is just a minute part of this constitution. There, we've talked about the issue of. Uh, State policy, we talk about the issue of giving more power to the state. We are talking about the issue of mineral resources. We are talking of even the issue of restructuring as a whole. That the way Nigeria is current is not working. Yes, I agree that we can do that. Um, but that does not mean that we put our democracy as it were and ask the, uh, 
and setting up an interim government, which will do us no good at all. When you set up an interim government, where will the president come? To? The person interim president come from the north, south, west, east, or where? Well, it will just take us about twenty years back. It is not it's not working well at all. Well, it's quite unfortunate because, I mean, if you look at some of the argument and proposition that is put out, as much as a lot of persons have not agreed, has talked about the fact that, you know, this constitution makes politics. And uh, you've, you've found that a lot of people are just trooping. I mean, look at the number of persons who have declared interest to become president. Look at the number of persons who have declared interest in their various states to become governors, uh, council, chairman, and all of that. What exactly are they really going there to serve the interests of the people. And constantly we look at the policies. Every time we look at government policies, how much of those policies across the entire country, whether at the state level or at the federal re level, represent the interest of the people or reflect the interest. Because policies, on the other hand, should solve problems. But that has not been the case for us. But fingers were crossed. And uh, like we always say, Nigerian is a nascent democracy. We hope that we get to a point where we have it all together. We will keep uh, keep on uh, keep keeping on and keep pushing until we get that I, I i really i know that we're out of time and i've been prompted you know to just go off but uh just for the fact that you are a parent i want to believe that you're a parent uh the incident that happened the chris land uh incident that happened the sex scandal the video and all of this and the fact that the federal legal state government has shut down schools required that schools uh in the states be shut down what are your thoughts on this in just a few seconds? Yes, uh, what happened uh, in, uh, to every parent? Yes, I'm a parent. I'm a father of three children, two girls and a boy. So I know what you're talking about. And for me, what happened is just unfortunate. That um, one, I, bring, I, I blame it on parenthood because it seems our parents um, have lost the morality or uh, they, they, they have abdicated their role to schools then secondly i also blame the schools um for what happened because if a, a child is put in your custody and you take the child away to far away dubai and you cannot be able to monitor what the child is doing or what's doing then you have a moral uh, uh, question and my 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 own on this is that why always as why is it only this land this particular school don't forget to they go that is a, a, a teacher in this school that was jailed for 16 years for defiling a two-year-old child. Yeah. Let's see, if you don't know that, it's a fact that a, lecture, a, a teacher in this school, this is Chris Lance School, uh, has been sentenced to 16 years imprisonment, still imprisonment, um, for defiling a two-year-old child. That shows you the moral question as far as this school is concerned. And I think before uh, this school is open, uh, a due diligence must be done by the government and make sure that the right thing is done. But what is happening is just a, 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 a rather unfortunate incident where our children seem to have lost it, where the parents have lost their right to be good parents and to wear. This never happened when we are growing up. People are saying that it's the new age. What about the new age? This is not the way to go. Parents, we as parents, religious leaders, committee leaders, and the entire country should be able to rescue our children from what is happening. Most of what they are doing is what they learn um, through the internet or the advance of technology. But right. for a child of 10 years old, that is a no no to me. It's quite important. Thank you, Chris Kende Wandu, for being part of the show this morning. It's been a delight. I mean, uh, great thoughts that you've put out there. We look forward to sharing more of your thoughts on this platform. Thank you very much. I do have a good day. Fantastic day to you too. Thank you so much. And that's the size of uh, of the press this morning. We'll take a quick break, but just before then, let's tell you what happened today been the 19th day in April in history.